Hello my name is Anita Sarkeesian. I have received much criticism since beginning my fight for equality. I have decided to start going through the slander against me and offer explanations for why they're wrong and why I'm right. First I will address the amazing atheist, the only thing amazing about him is his ability to be a sexist pig. He made this video in 2013, but when you deal with the constant harassment like I do, it's really difficult to respond when you are constantly crying yourself to sleep every night. I've gotten that under control and so I am ready to show how sexist pigs like him are what's wrong with this world. YouTube feminist Anita Sarkeesian, aka Feminist Frequency, has released the second video in her much publicized series Tropes vs. Women in Video Games. The reaction to her latest video is impossible to accurately quantify because she has once again disabled comments, ratings, and even statistics. Apparently sexist pigs like you don't know how women are. You see we don't need a discussion, it's a widely known fact that women are always right. For example when you being the sexist slob that you are, leave your dish out after eating, your girlfriend is right when she politely tells you to scrape your fucking plate you fucking amazing asshole. She is right, she is always right. But being right isn't respected in this male dominated society. Men choose to do things their way and that is why this world is in such trouble. For someone whose slogan is conversations with pop culture, Anita seems remarkably uninterested in discussion. Since when does having a conversation require there to be a discussion? The Merriam-Webster definition of a conversation is, oral exchange of sentiments, observations, opinions, or ideas. You see I orally exchange my observations, opinions, or ideas, and you nod your head in agreement. That fits the definition of a conversation. It's not my fault that you don't understand proper English. Her video is entitled Damsel in Distress Part 2, and the problems with it are both immense and abundant. Don't you remember? Women are always right. There are no problems with my video, they are based solely on facts and how sexist the world of video games is. It's actually difficult to confine my reputation to a single video. I feel that I could write a small book in response to Anita. Well you called a book the douchebag bible, why not call this one I'm a privileged white male who hates equality and refuse to see the oppression that women go through, especially in video games. It's a bit long, but certainly accurate for a sexist man like yourself. But I will resist that urge for the sake of my audience because I know that they're not ready for me to unload yet another one of my rambling forays into the printed word at them. Get to the fucking point you pig. So it should be noted, seriously get out those notebooks, it should be noted that this video does not cover every criticism that I have of Anita's most recent video. It only addresses what I've come to call the big ones. And when I say the big ones, I'm not referring to a buxom pair of breasts. I wish I was, but I'm not. What a lousy attempt at humor. Sexually objectifying a woman for her mammary glands is typical of a sexist male like you. Don't you realize the patriarchy has conditioned her to feel the need to have large breasts? She has been brainwashed by the patriarchy and its people like you who should be ashamed of yourself for making her do it. First, let's talk about the damsel in distress trope and why it's so prevalent. According to Anita, the trope exists as a sort of patriarchal, cultural reinforcement broadcasting a misogynistic message to our entire culture that men are strong and capable, whereas women are weak and in need of rescuing. Anita is apparently very convinced that this analysis is correct. That's because that is exactly what is happening you fuck face. Joseph Campbell was a mythologist and an expert in comparative mythology. He was the first person to document an interesting phenomenon called the monomyth. You're quoting Joseph Campbell. Why should I listen to anything he has to say when I already know about his sexist relative, Bruce Campbell? I know for a fact that give me some sugar baby. <laughs> Works. Your opinion is invalid Mr. Atheist Guy. Let's look at Mario, for instance. Pretty much every Mario game, aside from the sport and party games, involves Mario leading his everyday normal life when all of a sudden, the princess is abducted. This is his call to adventure. This is where you, the gamer, take over and guide Mario through a series of trials and obstacles until he rescues the princess, and she's so grateful that, well, it, it never exactly says that she puts out, but I think we all know that she does. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Mario and Bowser worked this whole deal out in advance, now that I really think about it. What you fail to realize is that there is no reason why it must be a woman who needs saving. Why can't it be the woman who saves the man? The game could easily be about a woman who goes and talks to Bowser and reasons with him. Instead we get Mario who takes shrooms and jumps on people's heads, kicking turtles from their shells and even shooting fireballs from his mouth. You Mr. Amazing Atheist Guy claim to want reason, 
but when a woman proposes a game that makes you have to reason with an evil patriarchy figure, you laugh at it as being ridiculous. Now let's talk about the call to action. That's the part of the monomyth we need to focus on to understand the damsel in distress trope. Think about your own life and what it would take to compel you to go on a dangerous quest. What compels me is the presence of patriarchy holding us down in every aspect of our lives. Is that enough reason for you Mr. Entitled White Male? Maybe you do it because your current life dissatisfies you and you long for something new and exciting. Maybe you do it because the world was in danger or to seek revenge. Which is why I am justified in my quest against the patriarchy. Men are destroying the world and we need to get revenge for that and have men just listen and believe us when we tell them how they're wrong about everything. Or to save someone that you love. Exactly. I love all women, which is why I'm fighting for female supremacy. Oops, I meant to say female equality among men. For most people, that's their spouse or partner and their kids. And of all the reasons that a character might embark on a quest, saving or avenging a loved one is probably the easiest to convey quickly. I think that is the reason for the damsel in distress trope. I don't think it's designed to denigrate women, I think it's just an easy plot device. Just because it's a good plot device that doesn't mean it isn't sexist against women. Why is it the women are always the ones who need saving? I mean that right there is so sexist it makes me so mad. So if that's the case, why is it almost always the male characters saving the female ones? Because most games, particularly action games, have male protagonists. And why are most gaming protagonists male? Because males are the primary players of the sorts of action games where these plot devices are used. Maybe women would actually play these games if they had less violence and more alternative costumes that don't show off their boobs. Don't you realize that every game has to be okay for all women? Seeing there are so many games that only feed into the masculine world, I love games like Depression Quest because it's thought-provoking and overall just wonderful. And I'm not just saying that because of that one time I had sex with Zoe Quinn, we were drunk talking about how much we hate men and one thing led to another, but anyways, it is a wonderful game. Most game developers are also male. Taking all that into account, it's no wonder that a male perspective is so prevalent in these games. That's exactly what I've been talking about. It's a boys only world and women are laughed at when we want to make games that make you have to talk to the person opposed to slashing their head off. Influences like that are corrupting young boys' minds. It's called toxic masculinity, and it is a terrible problem. We need to teach boys to fight with their words and not their fists, but those words cannot be sexist against women, because that reinforces their hatred and oppression of women. Is the simple act of telling a story with a male protagonist now sexist? In the eyes of feminists like Anita Sarkeesian? It is sexist because since the very first video game known to the public in 1950 Birdie the Brain made by Dr. Joseph Cates, was a game of tic-tac-toe, which we all know is sexist because of how X's and O's stand for hugs and kisses. Clearly Joseph wanted to force those kisses on the female board, they call it a motherboard for a reason. So ever since then the video game world has been dominated by the sexist male ideology. Because of this history of oppression it is only fair that also get 66 years of female-dominated video games. It's all in the interest of equality TJ. You had 66 years for your male woman hating, so we should get the same. I would say that the damsel in distress trope shows how much men love the women in their lives and will go through tremendous adversity for them. As you said earlier, Mario probably worked it out with Bowser so he could have sex with Princess Peach. That is the only reason men fight so hard for them. They're a prize to be fucked. Nothing more than a breathing sex toy. So you are wrong once again, this time by your very own logic. I'd say the prevalence of this trope, and really I prefer the term plot device to trope in this instance, I'd say the prevalence of this plot device actually says something good about men and male values. I know you are certainly no prize so you can't exactly relate. But it is very demeaning to be seen as nothing more than a sex object whose only worth is how smooth the inside of your vagina feels. We should be appreciated for our minds and not just our bodies. Every man I talk to tells me to shut up, or say to me, you know you're a lot prettier when you don't talk. I am tired of dealing with disgusting pigs like yourself. So no, it does not say anything good about men. The main case that Anita makes for why the damsel in distress plot device is problematic is that the stories built around it cannot be removed from the larger cultural context. Games don't exist in a vacuum, and therefore can't be divorced from the larger cultural context of the real world. Which is odd, since she has no problem removing scenes from these games from their proper narrative context. 
Quit your mansplaining, you oppressive pig. Of course, if you look at any of these games in isolation, you'll be able to find incidental narrative circumstances that can be used to explain away the inclusion of violence against women as a plot device. But just because a particular event might make sense within the internal logic of a fictional narrative, that doesn't in and of itself justify its use. So is context a good thing or a bad thing, Anita? You can't have your cake and eat it too. I can have my cake and eat it too. I have so many white knights baking me cakes. I can eat cake all day and not have to worry about having it. So there. These games, according to her, disempower women by showing them to be nothing more than victims. Anita Sarkeesian says that this is particularly offensive, given how often women are victimized in real life. Clearly your man brain cannot comprehend this so I'll spell it out for you. Men are taught to hate women by the culture, that culture is influenced by men who hate women, so it's nothing but an endless cycle of reassurance. Us feminists don't need circular logic like you men. We have facts on our side. It's especially troubling in light of the serious, real-life epidemic of violence against women facing the female population on this planet. Every nine seconds a woman is assaulted or beaten in the United States, and on average, more than three women are murdered by their boyfriends, husbands, or ex-partners every single day. So, wait. Anita objects to video games showing women as victims, but then goes out of her way to convince you that, yes, women are victims. You see, when you depict these images on the screen, you are further making women victims. It creates a triggering event. There is enough hatred of women in the world. Art is supposed to make you feel full of butterflies and unicorns. Not to be reminded of that time your boyfriend wanted you to do something you would normally initiate but weren't feeling in the mood, and wanted to be polite and pretended nothing was wrong until you were talking with your friends and they said, well did you want to have sex, and then you said no, not really, and then your feminist friend said, oh my god you were raped, and then you realize the man raped you. You shouldn't have to be reminded of that every time you play a video game. I think the real problem here is that Anita is reversing the cause and the effect. She thinks that things like video games displaying women as victims is feeding into the mass victimization of women in real life. It seems far more plausible to me that the opposite is true, that the amount of female victims in real life probably fuels the prevalence of female victims in art and entertainment. I already told you they both feed into each other. The games are created by men who hate women, young boys play them and are taught women are weak. It's very simple, Mr. Atheist Guy. Because let's face it, women are more likely to be victimized, and probably they always will be. Popular culture, including video games, probably doesn't play a significant role in this. It's much more likely that women are victimized because they are physically weaker than men. If women were physically stronger, I have little doubt that men would be disproportionately victimized. Bad people will always pick on those weaker than they are, regardless of sex. Typical male argument, turning it into something about how men are physically stronger than women. Men may have more muscles but women have more advanced brains that can see gender oppression everywhere, unlike men. Feminism is here so we can teach men not to rape, much like how we teach a dog to sit. Men claim to be smarter than dogs, yet men still rape and abuse women. Which is why men need women to tell them what they can and can't do. It's not demeaning, it's simply guidance from someone who is smarter. Let's get to the nitty gritty on this disempowerment issue. Here's a question. If the protagonist to a game was gay, and he was on a mission to rescue his boyfriend, or his husband, would that disempower men? No, it wouldn't disempower men, because men have been in power since the beginning of time. If a female character must rescue a male character, does that disempower men? No, men cannot be disempowered because of their inherent privilege. If the protagonist of a story is black and the person he or she is rescuing is white, does that disempower white people? Once again, no. Because white people have privilege. However if it was a black man rescuing a white woman it would be sexist because women don't need to be saved by any man. If the answer is no to all of these questions, and I think that it is, then how can Anita say that a man rescuing a woman disempowers women? There's no consistency. Like I've said in every case the difference is a matter of privilege. White straight men have privilege, gay queer black women do not. So you can shut the fuck up Mr. Misogynist. But of course the feminist response to that is that men are the oppressors, and therefore anything that men do that can be construed as sexism, will be construed as sexism, no matter how much of a stretch it is. It's never a stretch. Don't you know everything is sexist, everything is homophobic, and we need to point it all out. We're not allowed to show female disempowerment in games, according to Anita, but let's face it, female disempowerment is a fact of life. If a six-foot-tall man wants to rape a five-foot-tall woman, he's probably not going to encounter much difficulty. Which is why we need to teach men not to rape. They have the physical power to do it, we need to teach them that it's wrong. The woman is a victim, and a disempowered one at that. 
Are we to say that this very real life circumstance of female victimization and disempowerment cannot be portrayed in art or entertainment? I could perhaps understand that attitude if the games Anita was attacking were advocating such a thing, but these acts are almost universally committed by the bad guys who the hero must then defeat. No. You see little boys are still exposed to the idea that women are weak and need to be saved by men. In real life it encourages them to tell us what to do. Like this one time I wanted to walk down a dark alley and my boyfriend said I'm stupid for going there at 2am drunk and having money overflowing out of my purse from the 160,000 I was given to make videos. I went down the alley and was mugged. That's why the quality hasn't increased okay, anyways that man tried to tell me what to do, and then another man took advantage of me. Anita Sarkeesian is not trying to right a social injustice here. She's not trying to address a concrete problem that can be definitively solved. She's trying to say that one way of perceiving things, her way, is right. This coming from someone who has made a career out of telling people how he's right and they're wrong. Do you not see the irony of that statement? And another way of perceiving things, that is, the attitudes of gamer culture, are wrong. And if she's going to make such a case, I expect strong evidence, not just strong rhetoric. I have a whole series on the facts. It's not my fault your male brain cannot comprehend simple feminist ideas. So in closing, I think that Anita Sarkeesian needs to pull her head out of her vagina monologues for a moment and recognize her own victim status, because she is a victim of confirmation bias. She looks for sexism and misogyny everywhere, and surprise, 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 she finds it everywhere. Saying I have confirmation bias about sexism is like saying I also have confirmation bias about air. It surrounds us at all times. You dumbass. Also telling me to pull my head out of my vagina monologues is a very sexist thing to say. I mean I could have said why don't you pull the banana out of your ass and smell the shit that you've been producing. But I won't because I'm not an immature male like yourself. So in closing Mr. Amazing Atheist, you have made zero credible arguments and I suggest you watch all my videos, maybe you'll learn something. For everyone else watching, you can also check out my videos. My video cups are sexist delves into how you are sexist when you use a straw with your cup. Remember to subscribe for more content by me Anita the Sarkeesian Puppet. Remember, if you can text it, it's sexist.